Veja, tá aberto. Um... Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all our friends and colleagues around the world. I, Dr. Prashant Basin, the chairman of the International Cooperation Committee of the Global Summit, is actually gives a very warm welcome to our today's international speaker, a great mentor and a great guide, Dr. Sonia. Dr. Sonia, welcome to our Podina session. Thank you very much, Dr. Prashant. It's a pleasure and honor for us uh, that you have taken your valuable time today and you have actually spreading a topic which is, I think, which will open a different horizons for us. But yes, you have been into the field of uh, dentistry probably more than a decade or so. And I think you have changed the era of the dentistry changing from a pre-COVID to the post-COVID. So we would like to understand and we would like to know your experience, how it has changed in the last uh, two years. Right. First, I'd like to thank, uh, thank you for hosting my webinar, and I'd like to thank uh, the Global Summit Institute for this opportunity. Uh, as to your question, I feel that pre-COVID and post-COVID, the industry has actually uh, had a big shift, and especially related to networking and integration of healthcare professional uh, as a healthcare professionals as a team which is the topic i'm going to be talking today i found that because we're more on zooms and we're meeting more doctors doctors had more time i i'm finding this uh, integration of new healthcare providers and the communication has actually um improved opening up a big channel for doing what I'm going to be proposing we do today, which I think is the future of dentistry and healthcare altogether. Great. Well, thank you for your deeper insights on the newer horizons of the dentistry post COVID. So before we go ahead with a very uh, informative session today of, uh, by Dr. Sonia, I would like to share some credentials with you all. Dr. Sonia is an internationally acclaimed expert in a minimally invasive facial and a dental aesthetics procedure. She has a three decades of the international experience using laser biotechnology in the UK, Brazil, and the United States of America. She successfully runs two training academies from Dallas. One is the International Laser Academy and the American Academy of the Orofacial Harmony. She is also actively involved in the craniofacial sleep medicine at the Village Wellness Institute, Sao Paulo, Brazil, and at two sleep medicine centers in Dallas, with a holistic approach to the orofacial harmonization. Front runner on lasers and photobiomodulation in dentistry in UK and Brazil, she has a master's degree from the Eastman Dental Institute, London, UK and continuously do research and publications in the area of lasers in the cooperation with the two major international affiliated universities, that is the University of Sao Paulo, Brazil, and de Montfort University, UK, from which she's currently working towards the PhD in lasers in biomedicine. Dr. Sonia is a current president elect for the Group Pharmacology, Therapeutics and Toxicology Group of the International Academy of the Dental Research. She's a counselor of the AADOR, as in both committees, and the IADR Task Force of ADA Committee Working Group for the Development of ADA Standards of Dental Lasers. She was guaranteed the Top 100 Doctors Award in the Dentistry in 2020, has several publications and is on the editorial board of some major peer-reviewed dental journals. Such a vast experience of you, ma'am, it's really amazing for us. And I welcome you all to deliver your great talk with us. Ma'am, the, the floor is all yours. Please kindly share your presentation. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so today I'm going to be talking about, can you, can you hear me okay? Yes, you are audible. Okay, thank you. Today I'm going to be talking about the integrative oral medicine in the new trend. First, I want to make a disclosure that I have no financial conflict of interest on what I'm going to present today. 
So what's integrative oral facial medicine? Dentistry was first described in 2600 before Christ. It was found in the tomb, tomb of Hezihe, an Egyptian scribe, as the first inscription, dentist, the greatest of those who deal with teeth and of, phys the phys of physicians. In the Middle Ages, dentistry was represented by a guild of barbers in France, which evolved into two groups. The surgeons who, had, who were educated and trained and performed complex uh, surgical operations and the lay barbers who performed the routine hygienic service, including shaving, bleeding, and tooth extraction. In the 18th century, Pierre Fouchot, a French surgeon, was nominated the father of modern dentistry. The 20th century saw great innovations in technology, the water fluoridation and fluoride toothpastes, the development of acid etch technique, bonding agents, and composite resins. The development of lasers, also integration of dental implants. The 21st century is the era of digital dentistry, of artificial intelligence, cloud dental records, and integrative healthcare. Some of us are still mainly treating teeth. It's time dentists also move into this new era. Integrative oral facial medicine is a way to move forward. We now have become doctors of head and neck. The National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health, new strategy plan for fiscal year 21 to 25, expands the definition of integrative health to include whole person health, aiming at improving people's health in multiple interconnected domains, biological, behavioral, social, and environmental. The plan attempts to better define and map a path to a whole person's health. The National Center for Complementary and Integrative Health from the National Institute of Health also recommends that evidence-based complementary therapy should, not, should be integrated with and not used as an alternative to conventional medicine. If you're non Mainstream approach is used together with conventional medicine, it's considered complementary. If a non mainstream approach is used in place of conventional medicine, it's considered alternative medicine. The term functional medicine is used to describe integrative health or sometimes for naturopathy. Integrative medicine is the association of conventional medicine and complementary approaches together. Integrative health and wellness utilize multimodal interventions, conventional plus complementary health approaches in a very coordinated way. It emphasizes the treatment of the whole person rather than focus on a single organ system. It uses well-coordinated care with different healthcare providers. The use of integrative approach to health and wellness has grown up across the United States. Researchers have, are currently exploring the potential benefits of integrative health in a variety of situations. For instance, in pain management for military personnel and veterans, relief of symptoms in cancer patients and survivors, and programs to promote healthy behavior. Light and electric magnetic devices, for instance, are classified as complementary medicine and fall under the physical and psychological wellness category, as you can see from the graph. For us dentists, one example would be the use of photobiomolation 
photobiomodulation therapy to treat various conditions to promote an integrated approach to health. The way we as dentists can incorporate oral medicine into our practice is to use well-coordinated care with different healthcare providers and integrate complementary therapeutic approaches to our daily routine. We need to stop being isolated dentists and build a working team with our healthcare community using a good and regular communication channel, not only to refer our patients to each other, but also to coordinate our patient care in real time. We can build a team with the head and neck surgeons, the chemo and radiotherapy center, the psychiatrist, the myofunctional therapist and speech therapist, nutritionist, buccomaxillofacial prosthetic reconstruction dentist. We can include psychologists, chiropractitioners, osteopaths, integrative or functional medical doctor, ear, nose and throat doctor. We as dentists can take the lead as the core provider in many fronts that involves the need of our services. Many diseases and syndrome are first manifested in the oral cavity. We are on the heart of the correlation between periodontal disease and systemic conditions such as cardiovascular disease and others. In oral cancer, for example, we can work in coordination with the head and neck surgeon prior to removal of the oral cancer by making the obturator in advance whenever possible. So the patient can have their prosthetic appliance fitted in the immediate post-surgical, avoiding the need of oral intubation for feeding. We can also intervene in the post-surgical by construction of the oral nasal obturators or construction of a dental prosthesis that will allow the patient to eat better, coordinating with the speech therapist who will check for any nasality left with our prosthesis. The team involves other specialties that takes care of the patient as a whole, such as nutritionist, the integrative medicine doctor, the psychologist, and whichever other specialty we find necessary to add to the well being of our patient. There are so many areas where complementary health approaches can be incorporated into our daily routine. Thanks to photonic biotechnology, light and electromagnetic devices opened up a large field of opportunities from the areas of diagnosis, diagnostic with fluorescence to the treatment of condition with photobiomodulation therapy. We play a fundamental role in the early detection of oral diseases such as periodontal diseases, caries, and oral cancer, all of which can be enhanced with the aid of fluorescence. Light technology can be used to detect and treat disease in real time. For example, fluorescence can be used to visualize biofilms in tooth and, in tooth and implants. Recent research have also made it possible the use of fluorescence to also to guide cancer surgery in real time, allowing for minimal reduction of tissues. We are the providers of early detection of oral cancer, preventative and curative treatment of oral mucositis and xerostomia caused by chemo and radiotherapy of patients with head and neck cancer. Now, the randomized clinical trials have pointed to that oral opioids are not more effective than other drugs in control of pain. Authorities are supporting the use of and development of alternatives for pain relief. Evidence-based literature supported the use of photobiomodulation and lasers in the prevention and management of pain. 
We can use photobiomodulation therapy, for example, to manage acute pain and to offer comfort for many patients with chronic pain conditions, such as trigeminal neuralgia and other oral facial pain disorders. There is a large body of evidence supporting the efficacy of low-level laser therapy or photobiomodulation therapy for the management of our mucositis in patients undergoing radiotherapy for head and neck cancer. And it's now the gold standard of care for this condition worldwide. Photobiomodulation can be used in all phases of care for oral mucositis and xerostomia during and post-surgical procedure to produce pain and accelerate healing prior to chemo and radiotherapy to prevent oral mucositis, post chemotherapy to increase blood flow in the area and prevent necrosis, increase salivary flow, and to prevent, control, and treat oral mucositis and xerostomia. We dentists start with the prevention irradiation protocol before the patient undergo the chemotherapy and all the sessions thereafter are also carefully coordinated with the chemotherapy center and the professionals involved. Again, this required careful coordination between caregivers. We use a similar team approach in sleep medicine. We are also the core solution for consequences of sleep-related disorder breathing caused by cranial facial underdevelopment. Why and how? The American Dental Association issued a policy in 2017 stating State uh, policy statement addressing the role of dentistry in sleep related breathing disorders. The adopted policy emphasized that dentists are the only healthcare providers with knowledge and expertise to provide oral appliance therapy. They stated the influence of sleep related breathing disorder on potential serious medical conditions associated with obstructive sleep apnea, such as metabolic, cardiovascular, respiratory, dental, dental, and other diseases. They outline the role of dentists in treating sleep-related breathing disorders. They recommended that dentists assess patients' risk for sleep-related breathing disorder as part of a comprehensive medical and dental history and refer affected patients to appropriate physicians. Dentists serve as a front line to proper screening and education and therefore can change the course, course of healthcare forever. The goal of an airway collaborative network, for instance, is to tackle the root cause of a deficiency and compensated human airway. This approach is a shift to the orthodox paradigm that uses specific techniques for treating signs and symptoms of conditions and not the etiology. Healthcare professionals together need to find the common cause behind the medical concern of their airway patients. Their visible symptoms need to be investigated with multidisciplinary approach. We need to do a whole body health and wellness assessment, which will include a sleep study. We now know that there are a variety of health risks associated with this sleep and breathing disorder that may be resulting from underdeveloped jaws, such as headache, migraines, bruxism, mouth breathing, snoring, allergies, asthma, ADHD, bedwetting, chronic fatigue, aggressive behavior, anxiety, depression, dementia, hypothyroidism, fibromyalgia, cardiovascular disease, hypertension. 
obesity, diabetes, cancer. The multiple subconscious awakening present at the end of each sleep apnea, preventing the establishment of a structure, structured sleep, increased the risk by six times of having a metabolic syndrome in children with obstructive airway disorder. This metabolic syndrome corresponded to the presence of a set of physiological signs caused by impairment gas exchanges, systemic and pulmonary arterial hypertension, increases triglycerides and cholesterol, as well as insulin resistance. People with metabolic syndrome are at a higher risk of developing diabetes and are more prone to cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular consequences, heart rhythm disturbance and ventricular dysfunctions are, not, are noted in approximately 15% of children with obstructive airway disorder. So what's really happening? What's the underlying cause? Is there a compromised airway involved? What other signs and symptoms the dentist can identify? Is there a narrow dental arch, tooth crowding, high volt palate, tongue tie, parafunctional habits? Are there other issues that need to be addressed? Does the patient have a weak tongue, tongue low tongue position? weak oral facial muscles? Is the patient presenting abnormal growth? Dark circles under the eyes, looking tired, narrow and small chin, dry lips, mouth breathing, lack of symmetry, looking sad. Are there symptoms linked to a compromised airway? Parents are first the first to note a problem with their children breathing while sleeping. Sometimes it's the pediatrician who notes a problem in the growth curve or weight gain. The dentist also can notice warning signals, such as the shape of the face, like a long face, mandibular heterogynasia, macroglossia, large tonsils. We need to investigate the airway and not just look at teeth. What could be causing the compromised airway? Airway obstruction caused by underdeveloped jaw can cause many health issues and will need to be addressed by a team of healthcare professionals. The dentists need to search it through a detailed questionnaire and examination of all the risk factors for obstructive airways. You then refer the patient to specialists such as ENT, otorhinolaryngologist, or pulmonologist, a sleep doctor, to do further investigation of the nose, nasopharynx, and for a sleep test. Are there enlarged adenoids, abnormal septum, uh, ab abnormally in the turbinates, inflammatory nasal sinus, rhinitis? Does he have apnea or upper airway resistance syndrome? Does the patient have a narrow upper posterior airway that could be the root cause? We need to investigate. We need a CBCT scan to see the whole cranial facial structure and the airway volume. How did it get this way? Is a narrow upper or posterior airway preventable in children? Is it treatable in adults? We dentists are again in the front line of these questions. We must work towards identifying and treating the root cause of the problem. It is the dentist who can then address the treatment and expansion of the arts and of the narrow airway that could be causing all these symptoms. In the 21st century, we now have the tools to do it in a non-surgical and non-invasive way. 
This is a crazy.